Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at organic reaction mechanisms and a reaction mechanism is the step-by-step -step sequence in which the overall chemical change occurs and outlines the sequence of bonds broken formed in a chemical reaction. Now, in organic reactions, the first step is always to break a bond. We've got to break bonds. That requires a certain activation energy. So when we break a bond... Um, there must be some movement of the shared pair of electrons because uh, bonding in organic chemistry is predominantly covalent. There are two types of ways that bonds can be broken. The first of these is by a type of bond breaking called homolytic fission. Fission simply means to break. And the homo bit will become clear in a sec. So homolytic fission. So consider I've got two atoms, X and Y, and these two green dots represent my shared pair of electrons between the atoms. When this bond breaks, in homolytic fission, both atoms get the same number of electrons, hence why it's called homo. Homo means the same. When the bond breaks, they both get the same number of electrons, one each. Now, this usually happens when the atoms within this bond have got the similar or same electronegativities. This means that neither atom has got a particular preference for gaining the electrons. Now, when this, occur when this type of bond fission occurs, we get these species called radicals. And the radical then is shown by this dot. So the dot there is showing that we've got a radical. The other type of bond breaking or bond fission, if you like, is heterolytic. So we call this heterolytic fission. And again, consider I've got uh, atoms X and Y. Again, I've got my shared pair of electrons between the atoms in this covalent bond. And this time, when the bond breaks, we get one of the atoms gaining both the electrons. Let's just say that Y, in this case, gains both the electrons. And this then will give us an, a positive ion in case of X and a negative ion in the case of Y. So if we imagine that each of these X and Y atoms had an equal share of an electron. Well, X has lost one, so he's got a plus charge. Y has gained an electron compared to what it had here, so it's got a negative charge. So here we form ions when we get electro, sorry, um, heterolytic fission. See, it's called hetero. Hetero means different. When the bond breaks, they get different numbers of electrons. Y gets 2, X gets none. Now, in this case, the pair of electrons will always go to the most electronegative atom. So this is always the most electronegative. So when bond breaks heterolytically, the electronegative, most electronegative atom always gains the pair of electrons. Now, we can show the movement of these electrons using curly arrows and first thing we'll look at is when we've got the movement of uh, a single electron in homolytic fission and homolytic fission the the, the uh, sort of uh, electrons moving can be represented by a half-headed arrow sometimes called fish hook arrows so curly arrows they show the movement of electrons, either a single electron or a pair of electrons. So the first thing is we've got a half-headed arrow like this. And the base of the arrow here shows where the electron comes from. So where electron comes from. The head of the arrow is where the electron um, is in effect, where it's going to end up. Where it's actually going. 
So, for example, if I want to show this um, bond breaking in terms of curly arrows, what I would show is the following. Now, I'm not going to put my electrons in there, but what you would show then is that we've got one electron there and one electron there. So remember that the, this half-headed Fischer arrow is showing the movement of one electron. So this shows that one electron in the bond is going to Y, the other electron in the bond is going to X, and that there is forming my radicals. We could also show bond forming in the following way. So again, consider I've got my radicals, and this could, if I do this and I do this, then that would show the formation of an XY bond. So what we're saying is that one arrow is showing that the electron there is moving between X and Y, this arrow is showing the other electron moving to an X and Y. So these two electrons now are now here. So that's what the arrows are showing. It's showing where the electron's coming from and where it's going to end up. And we're going to show some examples of these when we look at the types of reaction that, um, that uh, certain organic compounds can undergo. More commonly, though, most... Uh, organic reaction mechanisms occur by heterolytic fission and here we get double headed arrows but again it's the same principle this time we've got a double headed arrow and this is where and the key is where a pair of electrons come from and this is where sorry pair of electrons end up or where they're going okay so the key there is now a full headed arrow okay now again if i was going to show this particular bond breaking here in terms of curly arrows then it would come from the center of the bond and it would go towards the most electronegative atoms. So when bonds break heterolytically, the head of the arrow always points towards the most electronegative atom. Now, it's really important where a pair of electrons come from. It says the base of the arrow, where a pair of electrons come from. So realistically, they should always come from one of two places. They should come from a lone pair on an atom, or the centre of a bond. Because that's where we find pairs of electrons. Okay, so we can also show forming an XY bond. Let's just show forming an XY bond heterolytically. So this would show, again, I've got my lone pair And we could do, I'll just put a little positive charge on there. So again, movement of the pair of electrons. I mean, in reality, we really should be showing this between the two because that's where the electrons would end up. But uh, you'll see in some instances, the head of the arrow pointing towards the X. In theory, it really should be between X and Y. Uh, and what you would get then is this would form again. X, Y. So again, that gives you an example of um, a bond forming. So again, really important to remember that the base of an arrow should really be coming from the centre of a bond or from a lone pair because that's where a pair of electrons uh, are. And that there, guys, is a very quick introduction on uh, organic reaction mechanisms and curly arrows. We will look at how we can apply these when we look at specific types of reaction.